Hey, what's up, guys? It's Noir, and today I'm here to just talk about a game called Unicorn Overlord. Uh, before I start, I want to give a huge shout out to a channel called Titanium Legman. He's basically the reason why I started playing the game. I had known that the game was going to come out just because it's made by Vanillaware, and I'm familiar with their games. I like Odin Sphere, I like Dragon's Crown, but I also never played 13 Sentinel Aegis Rim. You know, I feel like that's the one that kind of not necessarily put them on the map, but I feel like they're more known for that game than the other two by at at this particular point in time. So I was always interested in the game when I first saw it revealed. I think it was at like a Nintendo, it was on a Nintendo Direct. I wasn't hyped for it, like I had no excitement for it. I knew the game was gonna come out soon, so I started looking up YouTube videos for it and I came across a channel called Titanium Legaman and he had these pretty comprehensive videos on strategies already about the game just through the demo. I didn't watch any of those but I saw he had a first impressions and the title of the video was something along the lines of hands on impressions, unicorn overlord, the Elden Ring of strategy RPGs. And I was like, wow, the strip, the Elden Ring of strategy RPGs, you know, that's a pretty bold claim. And me personally, I'm not a huge strategy RPG buff but I dabble, you know, I like Fire Emblem, you know, my favorites are the 3DS titles. Uh, I'm also a huge fan of the Disguise series, which is also another strategy RPG franchise. I've played Final Fantasy Tactics, but I'm not like a super strategy RPG head, you know, my bread and butter is more fast paced action games. But nevertheless, I watched the video, he had, he had glowing, basically a glowing review of just the demo, and I was like, well, the demo's out, let me try it. I tried the demo and I swear to God, I played, I started playing the demo at around 11, 30, 12 o'clock at night and I didn't stop until six o'clock, seven o'clock in the morning. I was hooked and I was like, oh no. Even though I had just bought Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, $70, here I am sitting here. I'm about to buy Unicorn Overlord, aren't I? And I did, I bought the game. I've been addicted to it, I've put about 45 maybe 50 hours already and now i'm here to talk about the game because i don't know if it's gonna slip under the radar but you know it, it's being sandwiched between final fantasy 7 rebirth and dragon's dogma 2 so i think this game you know it, it's it's gonna have a hard time sticking out so i just felt like i, I had to make a video and plus i just want to gush about it pretty much but all that yapping all that rambling shout out to titanium leg man i'm i'm gonna start with the story the story in this game so far even though I'm 40, 50 hours in, I've been taking my time with it. So I wouldn't say I've seen a lot of it, even at that many hours. But so far, I'd say it's good. It's very simple by the books. Uh, like, you're a, you're, uh, the main character, Elaine, is, a, is, is the prince of the kingdom that got usurped. And he ran away in, into hiding and his mom died. And now he's here five years later to take back his rightful kingdom, right? Some shit like that. With a little bit of a magic twist, basically we find out very, very early on. I wanna say before you finish the tutorial, who knows, there could be a twist to this, but but pretty much you find out that a lot of the people are being mind controlled, you know, and the main character, Elaine, has this ring, the ring of the unicorn. He could basically wipe the mind control. So you're 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 liberating the lands, wiping all the mind control, getting everyone on your side, so you can build a big army and just take out and, and, and take back the land. Very simple, very straightforward. The best part about it is isn't the plot itself, it's the characters. They do a good job of just having very cookie cutter, stereotypical characters, and that sounds bad, but again, they do it in a very good way. It's the type of thing where each character isn't super duper complex or they have like the most groundbreaking motivations but you get to understand them quickly and it's easy to get attached to them, right? Just simply based off their designs, their motivations, who they're related to in the, in the story. The characters are really the highlight of the game. And each time you find a new one, it's exciting because it's like, what is this guy's personality gonna be? You know, how is he gonna bounce off the rest of the cast? And speaking of that, there are rapport conversations, basically the relationship support system from fire emblem this isn't it it's, it's in the game it's not super in depth but it is there and that also adds to the fact that you're building an army you're getting all these characters you know and so far i think i have not run into a character and i don't like them even the enemies they're 
they're all fun i think that's the best way to to describe it all the characters are fun it's like we're here to have fun like we're not here to think too hard we're not here to think too deep we're here to see cool characters interact with each other and and you know rally and take over the kingdom also the side content the side stories are basically main stories i mean there's almost no difference between a mission that says side story and a mission that says main story besides the fact that one of them is going to progress you through the game but the quality of the side quests are really good and the writing is just as good as what's going on in, in the main story and you, it's the type of game where you're gonna feel like you want to do all the side quests because it's just that worth it to see everything and, and it just feels rewarding uh moving on we're gonna move on to the graphics the art style vanillaware is known for just having beautiful art they take the anime art style and just kind of water brush paint brush kind of look to it but also they add detail it, it, it's really weird it, it's hard to explain it's just like good anime art <laughs> like like i don't know it, it's really polished uh the music is really good the ui is really clean it's a little horny just a little bit uh they've gotten better with this dragon's crown is definitely their most horny game by far but there is definitely a vibe where like you can tell it's like yeah like the witches kind of shake their hips in a really alluring way and a lot of characters have really big jiggly titties but hey it is what it is i don't think it takes away from the game too much it's not like etchy or anything but it's a little horny uh not too much to say about the graphics and sound the graphics really speaks for themselves like you look at it and you're like wow this is cool or you're like ew anime so i can't really speak much on it but the main reason why i wanted to talk about the game honestly is just the gameplay it's the depth of the strategy and the many layers of the strategy and how all these layers sit on top of each other and each layer isn't hard to grasp but like combining these i don't even know what i'm saying so you have units or i'm gonna call it squads because it's easier for me so basically you have squads and in these squads you can place up to six characters but you have to unlock the slots so at first you can start out with two three and you're gonna be with four for a long time before you get to the fifth slot i'm 50 hours and i still don't have the fifth slot so you have a squad you can put four units of your choosing in each squad and you can formation them in either the front row or the back row very early on it's going to be very simple very straightforward you want to put your armored units in the front row your archers and mages and squishy units in the back row that's the general concept and an idea of how you want to build your units but at the same time because of the equipment because of the way skills work because of the way tactics work as you go out throughout the game you're gonna run into very weird specific hybrid types of enemies to where just a guy with high defense and a guy with high dps in the back isn't gonna work you know you're gonna have to really mix and match all your different units to try and make these super cool well-rounded teams that maybe can't necessarily handle any situation but is really good at one particular situation. I think that's the best way to go about building your units in this game. Let's talk about equipment. I think equipment is a part of this game that the, the act of being able to equip your units with a bunch of different equipment, like in Fire Emblem, there's equipment, but it's very, very simple. It's literally like there's, you can equip a ring that might give you plus two strength. And it's very, very minimal. This it, it, It's honestly nothing. In Disgaea, there's equipment, but it's basically a means to an end, right? Equipment doesn't unlock a new strategy. It's, it's very much a means to an end. Like, you're getting equipment to get higher stats, to do bigger damage, and take less damage. That's, that's what equipment is for in Disgaea. In this game, sure, the stats are part of it, but, but the equipment is actually for doing specific builds, you know, building these characters in specific ways and either further enhancing what they're good at or putting a piece of equipment on them that can maybe help mitigate what they're bad at. Uh, a, a good example of this is maybe you'll get a shield that increases your magic defense. So that might be good to put on a hoplite, one of the big armor dudes, because they don't have any magic defense. So now you have a sort of still tanky physical defensive but now he can also handle a little bit of magic defense there's there's items that increase the amount of ap points you have which is you know your action points basically equip an item and you can do an extra action there's items that e that increase your passive points there's items that 
do any number range of things, you know, stuff that you can think of like higher damage, higher crit rate, higher this, higher that, but also specific things like brand new skills that the character otherwise would not have access to. You know, you can make super duper cool builds by just equipping a few pieces of unique gear on certain pieces of units. I think the gear is such a huge aspect of this game. And for someone like me who only plays Disgaea and Fire Emblem mainly, it's, it's really cool because I think it strikes a good balance between having the gear be meaningful but not in a way where it's just oh i take i do more damage i do less damage like you like you can really think about what you're doing with the gear in this game and it's really cool and i want to talk about the tactic system basically if you've ever played final fantasy 12 it's like the gambit system and that like when the units fight the battles do play up um automatically but you can change sort of how the unit will act by going into the tactics menu and putting these tactics in, putting certain uh, conditions so that certain moves will only activate under certain conditions. And you can set the priority and blah blah blah. And at first, you probably won't mess with it at all, but as you understand the game more and learn the game more, it's going to be super addicting going into this menu and trying to get your units to act perfectly, to try and cover all their bases so that if this thing shows up, this happens but if this doesn't show up this happens if this shows up you do this but if that shows up don't do that it's very cool and you can really get into the weeds with all the different options that they give you to set the conditions and you can add conditions remove conditions it's hard to really get into this without like just yapping just just straight yapping about you know tactics but but this system again it's another layer it's another layer on top of building your units building your formations, gathering your equipment. Tactics is just another layer on top of that, which just makes the game so fun. Like, it's just so fun to just think about the build potential and the options and then the tactics and then go into the mock battles and just to just see your units fight each other and just all that. But another thing about this game that I really appreciate is I wanna call it frictionless. Anything that might be annoying just isn't in the game. A perfect example I can give is you can use items pretty much whenever you want with no like regard for like, oh, like if you use an item, it doesn't take a turn or anything. Like it doesn't take a unit stamina. It doesn't, you can just go into your items right before a fight, pop four healing potions and, and that's allowed. You're allowed to do that. You know, like it's not like a, it's not restrictive in that way. You can before a fight, change the formation you know you can move your units around maybe moving one of the units around will change the outcome of the fight and the fact that you can do that even when two units are right about to fight and right before you press the battle button you can change the formation around so that you can maybe get a better result you can change the leader while the unit is out granted it costs one valor point but still being able to change the leader you know change to the mage and then go into a garrison tower again it's it's just frictionless like even the fact that there's battle predictions i think is such a great great mechanic because even on expert the ability to just tell a unit to move hover over somebody and see oh wow this dude's gonna get shit on let me not do that i i guess a mode to maybe turn that off would be cool for like hardcore players but i just think i'd rather have the game be fun you know because being able to see that my unit is gonna get destroyed doesn't necessarily make the game super easy you know like i still have to think about what i'm you know well what unit is gonna you know win right so again I, I just feel like the game just wants you to have fun and i love games like that even the the gameplay loop literally just playing the game from going to quests to collecting items on the map to doing side quests it all loops back into itself you get money honor equipment it's easy to just dump hours into this game because every time you do something, it doesn't feel like I can't wait to get to this other thing. You know, it, it you, you always feel like everything is just in service of itself. So like, you're not like rushing to, to get to the next part. You know, I think that's a problem with a game as much as I love it, but Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, as someone who's doing all the side content in the game, it is a little draining sometimes doing a really cool, super main mission set piece moment and then spending 10 hours doing a bunch of random bullshit in the in the open world just so that I can get the platinum trophy. 
Again, I don't have to do that. I enjoy doing that. But there is a little aspect of it that's grading. And in the back of my mind, it's like, am I doing this because I really want to? Or am I doing this because I want this game to feel longer? And, and, and you know, like, I, I want to I want to I, I want to feel like I got my money's worth with Unicorn Overlord. There's never a moment like that. There's never a moment like that. It's just fun. It's just so fun. There's Valor skills. I didn't talk about the Valor skills. There's also a lot of content. Again, I spent 50 hours on this game and I've barely gotten through the second area. And I'm pretty sure there's five areas like to liberate, maybe four. You know, I'm, I'm not too sure, but there's a lot of content. I'm yapping. I'm yapping. I know I'm yapping. I didn't, I didn't write a script, but I just had to talk about this game some somehow. I had to get it out of my system because it's so good. And it just came out of nowhere for me personally. And it's not perfect. Uh, a few things is I will say the story, it can feel a little simple, a little too simple sometimes, a little too trite. And there are decisions that you can make in the game, which is cool. But at the same time, they're very not all the time so far th there have been one or two kind of grayish ones but it does seem like it's like okay you do a mission you get to the end evil guy turns out maybe isn't so evil because maybe he's fighting to get medicine for his sick sister do you execute him or not execute him it's like uh <laughs> you know like it's very it's very kind of kind of like that and not every decision has been like that but it does sometimes seem like there's a right and a wrong answer for some of these questions, especially for the kind of character that Elaine is. Sometimes some of these options feel so out of left field for the kind of character that's talking in these, in these cutscenes. So that's one little caveat. Also, even though I love all the layers, I keep saying all these layers, for someone who's maybe never ever played a Fire Emblem game, never played a strategy game, this one might be kind of hard to get into. You can put it on normal or easy and then just breeze through the game but at the same time there's there are a lot of systems so even playing through on normal wild wild yeah you can get through it it might not feel fun to just breeze through the game uh i've been i've been playing on expert and it's a good challenge uh, i think if you're the type of person that does all the side content and you min max and optimize and blah 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 you you kind of have to play on expert honestly or else the game is just way too easy definitely and the report conversations are cool, but at the same time, I don't understand why they have these really nice animated models that they have for like the battles and the and the cutscenes. But then the report conversations are just the the little chibi avatars on the map just having dialogue. I don't know. I I just can't imagine it would have been that much more effort to just kind of not make a full cutscene for the report conversations, but just have a static background take the two animated models put them next to each other and then have the dialogue box at the bottom just like fire emblem like i don't i don't know why that wasn't done because i think that would just add so much more life to these conversations without really changing much honestly like it's just a little stylish design thing but i think that would go a long way for these conversations but again i'm just yapping i'm just yapping i'm not i'm not saying much of anything but nevertheless, if this game looks interesting to you, I would buy it. If you are a fan of Fire Emblem games, if you're a fan of Tactics Ogre, uh, Final Fantasy uh, Tactics, shit like that, and maybe you've never heard of Vanillaware, never played a Vanillaware game, maybe you saw the game and you thought, ew, anime, and you know, like, and you thought, and, and like, maybe you got a little put off. It does have that anime aspect to it, like, the dialogue is very anime like i don't know how to explain it without just saying that you'll you'll know what i mean when you play it but i think this is a game that should be bought and it should be played and, and, and it should be talked about and it should be getting nines and tens honestly this is one of the best strategy rpgs i've ever played maybe one of the best games i've ever played honestly like i'm 50 fucking hours in and i've barely scratched the surface i've probably i'm probably not even close to halfway and it's not because the game is that long it's just because i'm just having so much fun doing mock battles optimizing my units doing every side quest and just having fun just just making the super duper units that i know i can make so that's the video another shout out to tom otherwise known as titanium leg man shout out to you i probably wouldn't have been playing the game if i didn't watch your video 
if you watched it i appreciate it i know this is very incoherent and yappy but nevertheless i appreciate it thank you for watching and i'll see you next time